Welcome to Lecture Online. The first concept is going to be evaluating expressions, and in this case, there's not going to be any variables. These are simply just numbers. This is arithmetic, but it can get quite complicated. So we have to have a, a plan of attack. The plan of attack is what we call the order of operations. Which things should you do first? Which things should you do next? And so forth. For example, you first want to eliminate parentheses and absolute value symbols. Then you want to take care of exponents and radicals. Then you want to work on multiplication and divisions. Then you want to do the addition and subtractions. Typically, when there's a conflict, when there's more than one of the same type, you should work from left to right. And then there's cases where you want to eliminate fractions as well. And there's special techniques that we use to do that. So here's our first example. Notice we have fractions. We have an absolute value symbol. We have a radical. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we say we want to eliminate parentheses and absolute value symbols. So let's concentrate on this part right here. First, let's work out what's inside of that. So this becomes equal to 2 thirds minus the absolute value of 4 minus 6, which is minus 2, divided by the square root of 25 minus 3 over 4. Notice we're not yet tackling the fractions. We'll get to that in just a moment. We still need to get rid of the absolute value symbol, so when we take the absolute value of a negative number, that becomes a positive number. So this becomes equal to 2 thirds minus the absolute value of minus 2 becomes a positive 2 divided by the square root of 25 minus 3 quarters. So now we got rid of that absolute value sign. Next, we should get rid of exponents and radicals. We have a radical here, so let's take the square root of 25, which is equal to 5. This becomes equal to 2 thirds minus 2 divided by 5 minus 3 quarters. Now we have something that looks kind of messy and complicated. We have a fraction in the numerator, we have a fraction in the denominator. How do we get rid of that? So now we get to this point where, when needed, that's when we tackle it. This is a good point to do that. Notice that the denominator here is 3 and the denominator there is 4. The lowest common multiple of those two would be 12. In other words, if we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the lowest common factor, or I should say the lowest common multiple, not factor, but the lowest common multiple, we can get rid of the fractions. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the numerator by 12 and we're going to do exactly the same with the denominator. Let's see what happens when we do that. Let's go up here. This is equal to, well, 3 goes into 12 4 times, so 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Minus, a minus 2 times 12 is a minus 24. Divided by, in the denominator, we have 5 times 12, which is 60. Minus, now, 4 goes into 12 3 times, so 12 divided by 4 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times a minus, that's minus 9. Notice now we have 8 minus 4 divided by 60 minus 9. This is a division. But before we can do that, we need to combine what's in the numerator and combine what's in the denominator. You can think of this as still being within parentheses now, because we're dividing the numerator by the denominator. So let's go work out what's in the numerator first and what's in the denominator first. So this becomes 8 minus 24, which is a minus 16, divided by 60 minus 9, which is a positive 51. Finally, we have minus 16 over 51. The question is, is that divisible? Well, I don't think so. Let's see, we can divide it by 2. We can simplify it by dividing the numerator and denominator by 2 or by 3 or by 4, and so that looks like it's the simplest form, and that will then be the final answer to this problem. Notice that these are not easy. We need to do things in a very specific order, and if we do that, we end up with the correct answer, and that's how it's done.